Hello, my name is Cheddar, and this is a YouTube series blog for my recent blog I posted on a website called Instructables.com on how to build a Nixie clock from scratch with Adreno. I'm going to try and make these videos as quick as I can, but it's also for you know people who have absolutely had little to no experience with the Adreno microcontroller or Nixie clock or anything of that sort. <clears throat> First and foremost, if you just want a Nixie clock and you don't want to put a bunch of time in it and you don't really want to, you don't really care how it all works, do yourself a favor, close this video, go to eBay and buy one for like 40 to 60 bucks. It's going to be a lot less headache and a lot less of your time to do that. Um, but if you want to know how to drive these tubes from scratch, then this is the video for you and it's going to be kind of painstaking and it's going to take some time but uh, it's very rewarding but like i said it's also not the most it's also a more expensive way to do it it's going all the parts and components will cost you about two hundred dollars plus you know multimeters wire stripper stuff like that so this is the beginning video of that and i'm going to just start with the parts list i'm not going to put the script uh, links in the description for all these parts However, I will put a link to the Instructable blog, which does have all the parts provided. Some of the eBay parts might not be there anymore, but if you search eBay for those components, they're all over the place, so that shouldn't be any trouble. All right, jumping into it. First thing you're going to want is a bottle of your preferred alcohol, because this is going to be kind of painstaking. So there's that. On to the actual parts, obviously and foremost, you'll need an Adreno Uno. You can buy these on Amazon, they're like 15 to 20 bucks. Um, I prefer the actual Adreno Unos, the real ones, this is what they look like. However, I've used a lot of the generic kind, and I've never had an unsuccessful usage of those, so if you want to test and do with stuff like that with those, you know, no, no problem there, but since you're putting $200 into this clock, I would go ahead and just get an actual uh, legitimate one for, you know, your final product. Uh, you also will need this cable. It's just a serial com cable, USB to serial com. You have to use it to upload to the Uno, so that's pretty straightforward. You're going to need a breadboard, um, a nice, decent size one like this. Definitely, you don't want one of those tiny ones. Um, this will not be in your, I mean, maybe it's in your final product if you decide to use one, but uh, the real reason you need one for this video series is for testing and stuff like that. You're going to need a multimeter. Don't try and do it without one of these. These things are lifesavers. Um, they can make troubleshooting a lot easier. So I picked this one up on Amazon for like 15 bucks, and it's never done wrong by me, so it's uh, always in my toolbox. You're going to need some wire strippers and some needle nose pliers to make things easier on your life. If I were you, I'd also buy a good set of wire strippers, something like this with the actual, you know, gear to, or, you know, the actual swivel head. They do make wire strippers that are just something like this where you grab and you pull. Make your life a lot easier having something like this. So just spend the extra money and, and get one before you try and jump into all this. You're going to need some wire. I've just got red and black here, but you're going to want three other colors probably. Um, I use white, yellow, and green for my other uh, colors. Red and black, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is gr uh, ground and hot. So red and black is just what I've got sitting around. But you'll need some of this. I suggest 16 to 20 gauge solid core. Solid core being the most important part there. Um, you do not want to have to deal with braided wires and put terminals and everything. Some things are just easier to stick in and solder up. So you'll need some of that. <clears throat> um, jumper cables. I've got mine labeled male to male and female to female. These are just every single you know starter electronic kit has them. Just simple little prod wires for you to make quick and easy circuits. Um, if you don't want to spend money on those, you can always just take these, cut them, and uh, strip them and make your own jumper wires. But you know it's neither here nor there. But you'll need some of these for testing. Next up, you'll need some terminals. Um, you'll need a lot more than just two, so just buy yourself a pack of like 50 of them. And you can see I've got shovel and clip ends, and they just go to you like that, and you'll crimp your wires into each end. It's just for making all your connections. 
You will need a DS1307 real time clock. I bought mine from Adafruit. I think that they have a lot of really good products over there. Um, they look like this. And, you know, there's a little soldering you have to do. They come like that with your headers. You just solder the headers on through these holes. I also like these RTCs because they have the battery option. And that will keep your clock running, as far as just holding time, for up to seven years. So, you know, you don't want to have to reset your clock every, or reset the time on your clock every time you unplug it. So, definitely suggest those. For the world of IC, you will need some shift registers. You're going to need, uh, these are 16-pin. Uh, these are Texas Instrument ones. I bought these on Amazon for, like, next to nothing. Uh, you'll need one for every two tubes you run. So if you have an hour, minutes, and seconds clock, you'll need three hours and minutes, just two. They're pretty straightforward. You'll need some of these IC chips. These are 74141s. They usually have Russian or uh, something like that on the top because if you buy them on eBay, that's like all that there are. There's no real American ones uh, made that are left. But you'll need one of these for each tube. So if you have six tubes, you'll need six of them. Hours, minutes, and seconds. And if you have like hours and minutes, you'll just need four. You will need these 16 pin sockets. You don't have to have them, but save yourself the headache and get them. Um, you know, these are just little sockets for these 16 pins to sit in. They just stick right in through the top. You solder these onto your board, and then you can just stick your IC chips in there. Um, your IC chips can be damaged if they get too hot, so obviously if you're soldering them to a board, you know, you could not only, you'll know, honestly, A, you could damage your chip while soldering it, not realizing it, and then you have a bad chip on a board, and you've got to try and desolder 16 pins to get it off, and it's the biggest headache in the world, so just do yourself a favor. They're like a nickel each. Just buy them. Make your life a lot easier. You will need some type of a two-way switch on-off, um, not like a push button, but a literal clicking switch. This one has three prongs because it has an LED in it. Um, this isn't even actually the button I'm going to put on my clock, but it has a third terminal just to keep that light on. But you'll need a, a two-way switch for the power on your clock. Some LEDs, 3.3 or 5 volt or 12 volt or whatever you want to get. Um, these will not be in your final product or what I'm making for my final product. However, they are going to be used for the shift register demonstration and I guess you could put them in your clock for like a cool back glow or something but it never hurts to have a bunch of LEDs on hand just because they tell you when electricity is moving through a certain spot. A power supply this is called the HIS Vision AC to DC converter and adapter I bought mine on Amazon this is actually used for security cameras but it happens to have the same specifications that I needed for my for, for the clock so it's like 15 bucks on Amazon, a good power supply. And you're going to need a board, or a shield, I should say. This is an Adreno shield. The pin set matches the Adreno pin set, and it just sticks in the top. You'll end up having to solder stuff in here. It's got a nice 5-volt and ground rail in the middle, and you also will have to put you know some pins on here for like a high-voltage rail, rail and a low-voltage rail. High voltage for your uh, for your tubes and low voltage for your logic, and uh, you'll definitely need one of those. I just don't have to have one, but I would once again it's one of those things like the socket. You're gonna want one, <clears throat> and this is optional, but it's really I would say that you would want to use it as well. This is a PCB that I designed in Eagle, uh, which is a software program that helps you design you know schematics for. PCB boards, and I sent this off to OHS Park to be made. Um, you can see here I've got the two tubes with the 175 volt input, as well as both the 74141 IC chips and my shift register with my in and out 5 volt and ground pins. Um, you can you literally buy them in orders of three, so if you're doing hour, minutes, and seconds, it's actually perfect. Um, but I would definitely get one of these or buy set of three of these. I know they work because I've used them on my clock and um, it's a solid little PCB so I would definitely uh, suggest you get this as well. Otherwise you know you'll be if you try and build your own board you'll have to do it out of some general layout and you're gonna have to use wires to can make all your connections that are all withheld in this board and your clock's gonna be messy quick trying to do that so highly suggest these. 
And if you do use this board, you'll need some uh, 0.01 microfarad capacitors. These are super, super cheap. And um, they help if you have like a, and I, I've got a YouTube video in reply to some questions about this. But if you're using like a, a large pour on a chip like this, you know, you'll need some capacitors to regulate that surface area of the board. But if you don't use this, you don't need these either. However, like I said, that I would 100% say, you know, get both these. It's going to be nothing but uh, easier on you during your build. Well, I had to wait about uh, two or three weeks to get the step-up chip, and uh, I've just been making a bunch of videos lately. So, unfortunately, I've already sol uh, soldered all my terminal blocks. But this is the step-up chip if you get the parts. Um, from my list on Instructables, this is the one that you'll get. Now, granted, you can build this if you really want to, but as you can see with all of this stuff on here, I mean, you're going to spend more time and effort doing that than just buying a, a final product. And you don't even have to buy ones like this. This one's just specifically made for Nixie tubes, so it's really good for the job. Um, when you get it, you, these blocks will not be on here. This orange, white, gray, and this orange and gray block, they'll be off. They'll come separate with small little pin headers. And you're supposed to solder them in yourself. And the reason they do that is if you want a terminal style or if you want like a chip set style. The, you see down here you use three, uh, there's three unsoldered holes and over here there's two. If I had decided not to do the terminals and done the pins, I would have put those in there and soldered them in. Um, so just real quick soldering job, put these terminals on and then that's all you'll need and then you'll have your step up chip. So after about a month and a half of waiting, I finally got my tubes in the mail. Uh, I got 14 ends for my clock. These are the more common tubes. Uh, they make them in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This is typically what I see on clocks though, especially DIY clocks, because they're the biggest size for um, a reasonable price. These are about anywhere from, if you get a really good deal, $5 to about $12 each if you get a really bad deal. The next size up is um, actually like 60 bucks a pop, so you don't really see a whole lot of those because, you know, that'd be a flipping $300 in tubes just for the clock, uh, just for the tubes for the clock. So this is what they'll look like. Um, they, you, sometimes people buy them used, in which case, you know, these may be clipped at the end, which is there's enough wire for you to solder through a board, you know, you're fine, doesn't matter. Sometimes they'll be missing two of the pins, which are um, at the bottom that are the two decimal places on there. Once again, if that's the case, you're fine, um, unless you want to use a decimal point for some reason. But, um, yeah, this is what, uh, what your tube should look like when you get them.